we're ready to start stitching this. This is a small horn, so I'm only going to need about whatever that is. Welcome. Today we're going to learn about how to recover this horn. Uh, I've seen a lot of interesting things happening with these horns. Um, this is kind of a barrel trail style saddle. It's, it's a little bit unique. It's got some rawhide wrap on this. Uh, I talked to the gal and she doesn't, she doesn't really care to see that or anything like that. And I don't really care to tear it off. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of trim this up a little bit, get some of this out of my way. And then I'm just basically going to cover the top half of the horn and stitch it and then put a horn wrap over this and it'll look good as new. Um, so one thing with, with some of these barrel horns, they've got a metal horn in them. And a lot of times as this one is, you can see there's no, no way to attach my filler piece to the horn. And the filler piece uh, looks like this. This will be our bottom. This will be our middle, okay? And this is our top. But before I put the top on, I usually like to tack a few nails out around this deal. And what that does is, is it makes it so the horn can never spin like this. Um, too bad that we're dealing with the metal horn here and, you know, I guess if I wanted to get crazy, I could probably figure something out to make this work. I've talked to her about it. She's not going to use the horn for dallying or anything like that. So we're just going to glue it and, and make it work. But that's just this horn. We'll, we'll do other horns down the road. Um, this is just one way to fix this. This is kind of what I call the quick fix, probably the least expensive fix. Um, and we're going to show you how to do that. I've got my head knife here. I'm just going to come and get the rough off of this. Get some of this out of the way. Be careful. Don't cut yourself. That should be a good start. I have, through these horns, drilled a hole and um, run rivets through the, like pop rivets or whatever through this horn. Uh, through these kind of horns. So that's another way to do it to keep that from spinning. But again, she's not she's not she's just going to ride in this saddle. It's it's the horns not even going to be used for anything other than it's just there to hang on to if you need to. So she shouldn't have any troubles with it. Um, so we're going to go th down this road. So I'm going to take these three pieces and I'm just going to dunk them in some water real quick. It's just kind of a quick dunk. I don't need them soaking wet, but I, I just want them wet. Again, I didn't wet them too much. Just kind of dunked them real quick. Uh, I'm going to do a little prep work on this on my rock. And I'm just going to skive right here on the arched end of my pattern. Skiving it down to nothing for about a half an inch up. I'll show it to you a little close up when I get it finished up. So as you can see that's really thin and down to nothing right there and that's just going to make a little bit of a smooth transition on the underside of this horn and then we're ready to fit this up just going to kind of preform this pulling on the back and kind of getting it nice and tight around the bottom I'm going to fold this down and kind of get this shaped up kind of fit it up so when i glue it it's ready to go that's what she's going to look like before I glue it. I got this glue here. Uh, this glue is kind of hard to get. We have to get it in five gallon buckets. It's called Van Grip. Um, there's other kind of glues out there you can use too. There's regular barge glue you can buy. You can get from like Weaver Leather sells some. Phoebings I think sells some. Anywhere that's got kind of, you know, uh, tools of the trade, you can probably find glue that will work for this. Again, keep in mind, this is a quick fix. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best fix, but if she, if she was going to be dallying to this horn, I would definitely do something different. Um, 
but we'll we'll have the opportunity to do a dally horn um, later on down the road here's my top piece while I let that glue dry I'm gonna go back to my rock and do a little sky work here um, it's basically just a circle got this little flap that's gonna come down and and kind of go down the back side here bring it over to my rock and just just really start thinning this the edges out to nothing And I'm going to take quite a bit of meat out of the middle too. You'll, you'll learn what you like, how much thickness you like, all that. This is a really thin, all these pieces are really thin. This type of horn doesn't need a big thick, thick horn. So I like them thin and a little bit petite. That's why I, I split that down to probably, I don't know, that's probably six ounces time I'm done putting the three pieces together, I'll bet I'm eight, nine ounces total thickness um, when I'm done. So you can find those, uh, I don't have one with me at this shop, um, but you can find those little measures that tell you the ounces um, and that really kind of help you keep track of what you're, what you're splitting stuff down to or skiving stuff down to so you, you have your way of, of how thick you want things. Um, get one of those tools again i'm kind of kind of funny uh you know time is money when you're on these deals um you'll notice me getting some work i i think a few steps ahead this is going to be the actual final horn wrap and it's just latigo um, i have a splitter at work i split this down to about seven eight ounces and i need to sky the edges so that's a hand sky for me so again while i'm waiting for that glue i'm going to just do a little work to this and start getting it prepped This is a tricky thing to learn here, and you've got to have sharp, sharp, sharp knives to get that sky correct. Um, you can also use your safety skyver, French edger, tools like that to get this job done. Um, some good three in ones or five in ones have a good way that you can just run them through that if you have one. This method is best done on a smooth surface like this rock. Just mirror that on the other side. You want to make sure that you're not leaving no debris underneath this either if you leave debris you'll end up cutting right through it and making a big old gouge and then you got to start over again notice i'm just taking my time trying to be slow to make sure i don't cut through it and that's what it'll look like pretty much down to nothing on the edge um, while we're working on the horn, I'm going to put this in the bucket of water and just get it nice and soaked. And it'll be ready to go when the time comes. Uh, this glue, if you touch it and, and it comes off on your finger, it's not set enough. It should feel tacky, but not come off with your finger. That's when you know it's ready. Just gonna pinch this back side together. Uh, most of this will be trimmed off here in a little bit. And then we're ready for our cap. And we gotta glue it. And then we wait again. All right, we're good and ready to put this filler on. Just gonna make sure it's nice and pressed. Pretty thin, so I don't really need any cannel pliers or anything. I'm just gonna get it. Then I'm gonna come in with my top piece and I'm gonna look from behind and make sure this tail's coming off in the right spot. So I'm just gonna eyeball it, make sure it's coming straight, make two little marks, one on each side 
of that tab that's going to come down the horn, okay? And that gives me a chance to cut this section out. Got the middle cut out. Now we can glue that top to it. This is smooth out right now. I'm just gonna take this rasp and kind of get get a little little bit more of that smooth off for that glue to grab a hold of. Use a scratcher or rasp or whatever you want. In this case, I've got a rasp, so that's what we're gonna use. This glue. You don't need it on thick. Sometimes that makes things worse, so <clears throat> we just want it covered. That's plenty thick, plenty, plenty thick. Let that sit, and we will stick it on, <clears throat> get prepared for stitching. Glue set up, we can go ahead and get this set. Now, you'll, you'll notice I got a flat edge here and a flat edge here with this pattern. I want that to line up with right where the, this cut ends. I like in every horn a little bit of dome if I can get it. This is pretty flat horn, but I'm gonna go ahead and Dome it. And I'm going to stick this back down. You'll notice it's a little long so I can come in and just carefully come in without cutting the swell. And get rid of that little piece. And that's just the flat down. Just really don't need it down clear down here. It's just mainly to, to cover the back of the horn, make it look decent. Okay, now we can mark where our stitch stitch line needs to go and what I do is I actually like to eyeball this and I get down underneath and find where the end of the horn is under here you can see it if you do and then I just make an imaginary line going up and I mark it there on the front and then I do the same thing from side to side and this will allow me to come in and find center And dang near nailed it just right there, so. I'm gonna end my stitch right where that cut is, going back. That's where we're gonna start and end our stitch. So I'm just gonna take this creaser, this push creaser, and crease my stitch groove in there. Basically just press it down and go around there real careful. I prefer this method over a regular stitch groove on candle bindings and horns. I think it makes a really cleaner look than, than stitch grooving and taking away, taking away that material. This is a stitch marker. It just pretty much lays out my length of stitch between and tells me where to stab my stitch holes. Got that marked out. I take my nice little tool here. Uh, shout out to uh, Leather Wranglers. Paul and his wife made this for me and it it's really cool. They added this turquoise in it for me. I really like this little awl. Um, the blades are amazing that they sell. Um, they're diamond shaped um, and they're very, very sharp and they, they do the job really, it makes your job a lot easier. Um, one thing, when I stab, stab this, I, I don't wanna have my, my diamond heading in a straight direction. 
meaning when I stab, I don't want this sharp edge from, from hole to hole because that's a perforation. So I'm going to just angle this just a hair, hair in or a hair off of straight as you can see here. And I'll show you as soon as I get a couple of holes here. Now you can see right there that the angle of this is not, it's not like this, it's more like this. And that just keeps, that helps from keeping that horn being per perforated. We're ready to start stitching this. This is a small horn, so I'm only gonna need about whatever that is. Don't overthink it, you just need enough. I've got this other, all made by the same same company, Leather Wranglers. Appreciate those guys. They they make some good tools. Uh, this is just a hook and all curve needle that I get from Weaver, and that's how I stitch. It's it's a pretty simple method of stitching. I just simply grab the first loop. I'm going to run this thread through, make sure it's evenly spaced, and then after that, I'm going to grab a loop down here, pull a loop up through. Now I've got a loop there, okay? Now I bring this top thread through it and then pull the bottom and pull that through till it's about halfway. You'll get a feel for it. I don't want the bobbin showing top or bottom, so you got to get a feel for, for where that stitch ends in the middle of the leather. And I'm pulling fairly tight. I want a good tight stitch here. One thing about doing repairs, if you're going to do repairs, especially to learn, you know, a lot of times it's little projects like this. So you're not out a lot of material if you need to start over or anything like that. And another thing I like about it is it gives you the opportunity to try to do the best work you can do, but it may not be as good as you're going to be someday. And doing it on a used saddle, it, is, it isn't as noticeable um, either. So... This is just a good place to start and get a foundation for, for saddle making, if you're gonna be a saddle maker. You can make a really good business um, just out of repairing. I, I stay busy, me and, me and a partner do all the repairs. Um, I do all the repair work and he does, he does the cleaning oils. And man, we stay pretty busy on the side. We could definitely turn it into a full-time gig and make good money at it. Um, as long as you price it right, keep in mind, there's overhead in every business. I have this shop here. It costs me money to build. Um, I've got to keep that in mind um, and create a shop rate. My shop rate for repairs is about $45 an hour, and that covers my lighting and my heat and, and you know the waste and all that stuff. And that's how I base my prices. I can do a horn relatively quick now. It used to take me longer than it does now. Um, but this this horn's going to cost a person right around 60 bucks to to recover um, and you'll just figure that out, out as you go just remember it ain't about the 45 dollars it's deciding all right well how much do i want to make an hour let's say i want to make 20 bucks an hour well that's good i hope you do but keep in mind you when you start this business you're not only the craftsman fixing this stuff you're the bookkeeper. You're the one that, that make, has the phone calls. You're, you're a retail salesman. And, and you're, so you need to make sure you're not just doing wholesale work. You've got to charge enough to, to pay for all that. And, and that's why I say that's what a sh where a shop rate comes in. $45 an hour doesn't mean that I collect $45 an hour. Um, that means I make about 20 bucks an hour. It took me 20 years to get to where I'm at today, I figure I'm worth 20 bucks an hour. Um, so just, just keep that in mind as well, guys. Um, there's not a lot around here that do repairs, um, and I hear that a lot from other states. There's not a lot of places to go. So you could really 
do a cool, unique business and work for yourself if you want. Um, learn, learn some skills, create a business. Um, and I like that because you can do that right here too. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep coming back with every sort of repair, every sort of how to make saddles, all that kind of stuff is going to be on this platform. We've got that stitched. I've got my thread burner plugged in, getting it heated up to burn the bottom of these threads off. And come back to center. I, sh I should have not gotten a hurry and made a dot here. There's an easy way not to leave that there. And it's take a little chunk of leather like this. Set it there and that keeps you from marring up your, your, your leather. That was kind of dumb of me, but um, go ahead and do this. Sometimes you can learn a lot for me of what not to do. How's that sound? And we're just going to scribe my cut line. Gives me a guide to go along and take my head knife. Going to carefully come in here. This head knife is sharp. So I want to go real slow. Take my time getting around there. If you're unsure that it's perfectly round, you can take what I call a sure form. A sure form is uh, meant for sheetrock, the edges of sheetrock. It works really good to go around these horns and make sure it's nice and round. So invest in one of those, they're not very much money. Called a sure form, you can get them in any hardware store. It's time to edge this puppy. And I've got a number four open edger. And I take quite a bit off. I like the edge to look nice and thin. There's all kinds of edgers out there. This one's probably the most difficult to learn how to run, but I really like the way it cuts. So that's why, why for me, I like to use this one. We got that edged. Um, this chocolate leather, I like to, to use a little mahogany dye or chocolate dye on the edge. I'm just gonna dye that raw edge like so. I'm going to take my burnish rag. I want to show you something that I built. Um, these are three thicknesses of 13 ounce leather glued together and it was a block at one time and then I just drilled. I found the size bit that I liked for like a skirt edge or a horn edge and took and drilled a hole this way and I took a smaller one for like a single thickness of leather and drill the hole this way and then I cut right down through that hole and it just it helps me keep these edges nice and rounded um, and so I really like that little tool you can make it just there at your own shop they're handy and then I got this canvas that I squeeze that block and you can see that groove is going to start coming through but I want to dampen the edge just a little bit more it's already plenty wet it's almost too wet it soaked up a lot of water when I dunked it but we're okay we'll just Dampen that edge. Go to work on the edge. And this is going to make that edge nice and smooth and compress all them little teeny fibers that are poking through. Just like that. Now, if you followed me along and didn't do your homework and watch this before you started. I'm going to show you a way to maybe if I've got a tool here. I'm going to show you a cool way to get rid of that. And it's just a little flower center I've got. You can use a cedar or whatever. And just stick that in there and now it looks decent. Not done yet. I told you I like a little bit of dome. So I'm going to come around here with this hammer. I'm going to tap this down just a little bit and get it doming a little bit more. I'm 
Again, hit it soft, it's wet, it can leave big old dings and stuff in it that I don't like. But we're covered. Now we're gonna burn these threads off. From underneath, I just tied a knot under here. You can you can back stitch if you want to, that works too, but you still need to burn your threads off. And then remember we've been soaking our our horn wrap, the final thing, while we've been in this process. Uh, it should be good and wet right now. This ain't a very big horn, so I don't want a great big old slot. It'll probably be about three inches here. Like that. Go back to the saddle. Run that over like that. Shove that down just as far as it'll go. And then we're gonna start wrapping this. It's good and damp. Just gonna start kinda high with one wrap and then second wrap. Now I'm on the third wrap. The third wrap's really when I'm going to start heading down the horn. Sometimes you just got to keep going until you like what you see. Each horn is different. In the way it wraps. I like to tap it around. Helps get everything tight. And then we're simply going to tuck it under this pie that we cut out of here. Cut my tail like this. Save this for another. That's long enough to do another barrel style horn. So I'm going to save that excess for the next one. Pair of needle nose pliers kind of grab that. Pull it through. Take a look back at it, work it over a little. And then the next step would be to let this dry, add a little oil, a little bit of polish, and we've got a horn covered. That was a fun class. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching this month's skill video from Shop Talk. These are produced by our friends at Illume Atelier. Are you looking for more projects, tips, and tricks like this one? Become a member of the Illume platform for access to online leather classes designed to take your work to the next level. The link is in the description below and please click the subscribe button for more videos like this one.